Once again, everybody, my name is Lori Page, and I'm coming to you from the advisory team here at Sound Wealth Management. In an effort to provide you with the relevant information that you want to know, we did a search for the most Googled financial questions. And while some are more entertaining than relevant, a few of the top 10 are really great questions. While Google, Alexa, Siri, all serve a great purpose and can provide a tremendous wealth of information, it's also important to keep in mind that they have their limitations. So let's look at a couple of the most frequently searched questions for some context. First, how to invest in stocks? This is an excellent question. And for this question, the internet can provide a massive amount of information ranging from the basics like how to open a self-managed brokerage account to key terminology like market cap, PE ratio, R squared, alpha and beta. And for many people, this all starts to sound like a whole lot of Greek. See what I did there? Anyway, moving on. What Google can't do for you when you ask this question is to open the dialogue to help you assess your tolerance for market risk and evaluate different stock positions for how they do or do not fit into your desire for or aversion to market risk and your long-term investment goals. While some people choose to dig deep into the analysis and invest alone, this becomes a very time-consuming and risky endeavor. Investing with the help of an experienced financial advisor can help you find the right balance for your investment needs and financial goals. So let's look at another one. How much house can I afford? Another great question, especially with the recent surge in the housing market. Searching an answer to this question will likely turn up answers that explain different types of mortgages, the amount that you need for a down payment, and the maximum allowable debt to income ratio to qualify for each mortgage type. What Google will fail to answer for you, however, are things that lie outside of basic mortgage underwriting, like how your housing expense relates to what you're doing to work toward your other financial goals. For example, in mortgage underwriting, your debt to income ratio is calculated off your gross income and not your take home pay. If you're making a large pre-tax contribution to your 401k to save for retirement, this won't be considered. With the current inflation, we're all feeling more pain at the grocery store and the gas pump. Your daily living expenses may not be accounted for on your credit report. Running this question past a financial advisor that can look into your personal scenario holistically can help you get an accurate picture of how you can work towards multiple financial goals simultaneously. And remember folks, if you need additional information specific to your situation on these topics or have financial questions that aren't addressed here, please don't hesitate to reach out to my team here at Sound Wealth Management at 941-932-4822 or schedule your no obligation consultation online at www.soundwealth.net where Sound Wealth Management is more than just our name. Have a great day, everybody.